divine truth feedback. Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Jesus and Mary give personal feedback to Janie Hope Williams on the subject of New Age philosophies and God's laws. This session was recorded on the 22nd of December 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is part one. Hi everyone, I'm here again today with Jesus and we are recording another personal feedback session. Um, this session today is in response to an email that Jesus received directly from a lady called Jane Hope Williams. So I will read the email and we'll have a good discussion about it. Mm. <laughs> okay, she says, mm. Dear Jesus, I'm a yoga teacher and teacher of yoga teachers the director of the Australasian Yoga Institute, mm -hmm. a minister of religion by training, and a chaplain to those recovering from addictions of all kinds. Mm -hmm. I was overjoyed to find your videos and, re and, re and have received much peace and joy from visiting them daily. However, I have an issue with your understanding and explanation of karma. I've always understood that the law of cause and effect, like gravity, was operating all the time. But not to give us our just desserts in the next life, although that may happen, but to give us our lessons throughout this life. That is deter determined and attracted by our actions and reactions. Mm -hmm. Plus, by our own decision, free will, the life between lives gives us the opportunity to review our current life and decide what tasks we will accomplish in the next one to lessen the karmic load. <laughs> if karma was a, about payback only in the next life, then there is no difference to Christianity or the Muslim or perhaps Jewish faiths where good deeds are rewarded and bad deeds punished in the next life. It makes no sense to me and certainly was not what I have believed for more than 50 years of constant study. I've watched a number of your videos on this subject, and whilst I am overjoyed with your teachings on many subjects, this seems to be quite massive misinformation, notwithstanding your impressive CV. I would like your answer. Namaste, Jane. Hmm. Sorry. Well, I think firstly, you'd like to make some comments <laughs> about, the, about the email, and well, then I can certainly make some comments. Yeah. Maybe if I just make a few brief statements first. Firstly, um, I have never said that karma, as, as it's taught by Buddhist or other philosophies, including the New Age philosophy, just is about your karmic load on the next life, as she's talking about. Mm -hmm. But, but obviously from her email, she believes in reincarnation and we do not. <laughs> and we know that there is no such thing as reincarnation as taught by any Buddhist or New Age or any other philosophy on earth. There is a type of reincarnation that's possible, but, but as, I, as I've explained in the Secrets of the Universe, discussions that's only available to you after you've reached the soul union state. Mm -hmm. So her whole premise of her question is based on her assumption that we believe in reincarnation, which we don't. <laughs> and and this presumption is is taken because she's obviously not investigated enough of the material that we've presented, but also because she's driven by spirits who drive her to believe these particular presumptions mm -hmm. and then to ask questions about the presumption rather than actually asking questions about what we're actually teaching. Yeah. So we find this happens frequently where people who are who come to the material, they say they, you know, watch pieces of it every day, but they obviously haven't watched some key portions of it yeah. <laughs> to understand the actual way the universe operates and also the way that God has instituted all of God's laws and how they all work. And so this email brings up a lot of different questions about the law of attraction, the law of cause and effect, the law of compensation, mm -hmm. and how that relates to the earth-based man-made philosophy of, re of karma and reincarnation. Yeah. And the reality is in most of our presentations, we're trying to get some point of contact so that we can build on a person's prior understanding of things. But another reality is also that quite often when you do that, people then think 
that you're that you actually believe what they believe or they make that presumption and that's not the case at all. Yeah, and so when you say a point of contact, what you're referring to there is sometimes we might liken um, an element of God's truth to a somewhat error-based concept on earth, yep. such as karma. Yep. Uh, uh, we might liken a, an aspect of the teaching and say, well, you guys have heard of karma, so it's similar to this, mm. but then people kind of often misinterpret it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I have stated quite clearly that we pay for our penalties the moment we engage the sin, mm -hmm. the disobedience of the law. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that has been quite a clear presentation of all of the videos. Obviously, she hasn't watched those particular videos. Yeah. And the law of, a, uh, of cause and effect obviously does apply some to that but that, that's not the only law that applies here no not and really. this is where i see new age philosophy often mixing up their laws as yeah. well because they don't understand god's truth and they've not received god's love they they misunderstand the application of many of these laws mm -hmm. and apply it to their own intellectual based understanding which is exactly what jane is doing here yeah and i don't know whether her pronunciation of her name is Janey or Jane. Yeah, you're right. But, it's uh, spelled J-H-N-E. Yeah, yes. so I'm not sure. So I had the feeling. apologise in advance. Yes, <laughs> that perhaps she was born Jane and perhaps added the H at some point. Yes, um. <laughs> which is common in New Age uh, people as well, that they often change their name um, to, to um, obviously gain some kind of reaction in person that they're explaining their name to well, and I... also to to avoid some personal emotions. Yeah. So that, that's a general thing I'd like to say at the beginning. And then what we'd like to do firstly is address Jane's um, personal, emotional and, and, and spiritual condition and then go into the question of actually answering or demonstrating the difference between the, the earth-based philosophy, which has no bearing on God's truth at all, of mm -hmm. karma, mm -hmm. and the uh, true teachings, the, the truth, God's truth, about the law of attraction and the law of compensation in particular. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that you um, were able to follow Jane's email a lot better than I was because I felt oh, that... I don't know if I'd <laughs> agree with that. She, she, does, she thinks she's being logical but she's actually not clear in stating whether she has a problem with that I taught something about karma that's wrong or whether I'm teaching something about the law of, the law of cause and effect that's wrong. Or, or that she has misinterpreted something else that you've said to be the same as karma. Or yeah. She hasn't really referenced what she's watched. She hasn't no. really... Um, so she's given very little information, but we can look at the information as to yes. her condition. Yes. And her different emotional uh, things that are in play. And we can talk uh, about the laws themselves and, and what they really are rather than what New Age philosophy or Buddhist philosophy or other other philosophies that believe in reincarnation believe them to be. Yeah, absolutely. And mm. I feel that there's a great <coughs> opportunity just to pre present some clarity around the truth. Yes. But I do feel that there's some personal emotions that we Jane must or Jane cover, has yeah. Yeah, that mm. are... Uh, quite prominent in her email in the, in the way that she's even approached you. Yes. And, and we need to also say at this point that we are going to have an, uh, an, uh, some very strongly clarifying uh, discussions in the F FAQ section yeah. about reincarnation and all the possible, all the different teachings that are apply on earth, including karma in mm -hmm. the process of reincarnation. And, uh, and why it is an untruth from God's perspective. Mm. Um, and so we need to cover, we'll cover some of that today, but anybody listening needs to understand it's a very basic introduction we're going to give today yeah. um, in terms of giving her some feedback um, rather than, um, you know, being a, com a comprehensive discussion of the subject. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, <coughs> will we just launch into discussing some of the issues of about love and humility that were quite evident in the yeah well, did you want to make any comments about what i think you we felt? pretty much covered them right. just just that um it's quite interesting doing these sessions now because i'm often selecting the emails and preparing a lot of um you know the documents and stuff and what i'm finding is that um a lot of people don't think much about who's receiving the email and they don't often, um, some people are fantastic, some people really don't clarify what, what they want to say 
And for me, re first reading Jane's email, I wondered if she'd actually been watching our YouTube channel because, or someone else's, because so much <laughs> of what she said really um, doesn't apply. Doesn't apply to us. And actually, I think that she was implying that you had said things that I know you've never said about karma or, or, or what have you. Mm. And also, then she threw in the law of cause and effect, and it. it People's emotional quite, condition determines what they hear. Yeah, that's and, all I And determines to say. how they hear it. Yep. And this is one of the problems that Jane has, is that her emotional condition and her prior belief system is determining how she is and what she is. And this is a problem that we will have yeah. to discuss. Yeah. And I, the other very prominent thing, which I know both of us want to speak about, was just that I felt that she had quite a condescending feeling towards yourself. Certainly, the level and of arrogance in her is quite extreme. Just it's similar to last week, how I received yeah. uh, another email. It's what I'm going through, some of the things <laughs> I'm going through at the moment, how women generally uh, treat me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, most of the women treat me in this condescending manner, believing themselves to be right. And I feel that's how they also treat men in general. And mm -hmm. that's certainly the case in Jane's case. Yeah. She certainly treats men in general like they don't really understand what they're talking about. While they agree with her, they're nice fellas. Yeah. And as soon as they don't agree with her, then they've got massive problems. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that's how she yeah. sees the world, which is showing one of her emotional injuries, actually. Yeah. 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 All right. So... I, I think that, you know, basically we can just move on now and discuss Certainly. these specific issues yes. about um, love and humility yes. that we both wanted to mention. So, yes. so and, and while it sounds like a very innocent email, it is actually full of comment about her unloving behaviour. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting fact. It is. And, and this is where I find most people have very little idea about the unloving behavior of a person as long as the person presents a fa facade based pleasant pleasant demeanor mm -hmm. they're, they're not aware of the underlying emotions that are driving which that are driving the individual that are often uh, uh, from god's perspective very harsh mm -hmm. and very uh, and and very much indicative of their very poor soul condition mm. and this is what we find with many people who, from from many religious movements, including the New Age movement, is there is a huge um, misunderstanding about sin mm -hmm. generally. They judge sin from their own perspective and they cannot see God's perspective. And the main reason why is because they have not received God's love in order to have God's perspective. Mm -hmm. And therefore they are unwilling to see what a sin really is. Mm. And I think what we need to do is on this email is explain some of the ways that Jane is sinning even in her interactions with myself. Yep. And that should hopefully help her to see that maybe her perception of how much she thinks she knows mm -hmm. is quite different to what her true soul condition really is. Yeah. And this is a, a this is a big requirement if we're ever going to get close to God. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yes. So if we just look at her first couple of lines, sure. she begins with, Dear Jesus, I'm a yoga teacher and teacher of yoga teachers, <laughs> yep. the, the director of the Australasian Yoga Institute, a minister of religion by training and a chaplain to those recovering from addictions of all kinds. Yes. So that's her first few lines. And then towards the end of the um, email, she also says, that what you've said makes no sense to her and certainly was not what I've believed for more than 50 years of constant study. Yes. So this is there's a strong emotion actually driving Jane to make those particular comments, of isn't course. there? And that's all about um, an addiction to facade, a, a desire to get credence through earthly kind of qualifications. Mm. And, and to present even the goal of presenting your qualification before you ask a question is in itself manipulative because what you're basically doing is you're basically saying to the person you're questioning that because you have all of these titles and, and experience, mm -hmm. that it means that the person you're questioning possibly does not have those particular things mm -hmm. and therefore would know less than you do on the subject. Now, if I chose the same kind of one-upmanship <laughs> that, that she herself is doing, I could say, 
I've lived for 2,000 years. I've studied most religions on this planet for that period of time and therefore have probably a better understanding not only about the, her own religious viewpoints and faith, but also about where they all came from and how they all got created, yeah. and in many cases, who created them. Yeah. And, and, the, and also, um, I have learnt to, uh, over those 2,000 years, to feel a person's emotions, so therefore can feel quite accurately what she's actually feeling in comparison to the facade she's presenting. Yeah. Now, I don't choose to do that, and uh, gen you know, in a normal conversation with a person, I don't present any of my qualifications <laughs> at all. All I do is I tell them that I'm Jesus because I feel that's a point of disclosure, of yes. openly disclosing my identity, and then I proceed to <laughs> talk about whatever subject it and, is that and, takes my fancy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people think that um, that <coughs> gives you qualifications that you don't have as in being God, yeah. and then other people think that it, you know, there's a lot of misunderstandings on Not only that, all, all new age people believe that um, that means that I'm saying I'm a reincarnation of Jesus, which yeah. I am not yeah. actually saying. Yeah. I am saying quite clearly that I am the person who existed in the first century and has that I had a life in 2000 years in the, in the spirit world that I remember, and I'm now back on earth. So most people who, who, who listen to what I say stay, base their hearing on their own belief systems or what that might mean mm, mm -hmm. rather than actually listening to what I'm actually saying. Yeah. And this is a common problem yeah. uh, as well. Yeah. But let's get back to yeah. the humility and love issues. Yes. First well, and, and I wanted to add that the, the only real qualification that I've, the, the thing that I recognise as a qualification to actually understand truth is through the receipt of God's love directly. Correct. Into, that is into the only qualification, soul, in into fact. anyone's soul. And the sad fact is that Janie has not received any no. because of her belief systems in particular. Yeah. And as a result of that, it's impossible for her to actually know what God actually feels about her at any one point yeah. in time. At this point, she she certainly is very connected to spirits, yeah. and they tell her many things, yeah. many things that she thinks she currently believes, but actually in the soul does not even believe. At this point, they tell her, mm. and they have convinced her intellectually about her condition and and many other things, which which we can talk about yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So the the next point um, was about her making assumptions about divine truth teachings. So she's assuming that she understands uh, what you are talking about when there's some, perhaps some similar words being used. Yes. But you actually mean something else entirely. Correct. And this is a very common problem that we find when, with New Age and Christian audiences mm -hmm. where, they, where they believe that when we're talking about God, it's their conception of God if it's a Christian, mm -hmm. if it's a Christian audience. audience yeah. If it's a New Age audience, it's their conception of God. Yeah. Now, those two conceptions of God vary greatly, like yeah. the Christian, the standard Christian belief, and I'm not talking about some of the more, uh, some of the more obscure Christian faiths, but like Jehovah's Witnesses or, or, or Christadelphians or those yeah. kind of, uh, or, or Seventh-day Adventists. I, I think it's Seventh-day Adventists and Jehovah's Witnesses that don't believe in a triune God, but mm -hmm. the majority of Christian faiths do. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that when I say God, that's what they're thinking of. Yes. Jesus, Holy Spirit, and God. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is obviously not what I'm thinking of. Mm. And a new age person, when they hear me talk about God, hear, hear me talk about, you know, about having a relationship with God, they think that just means having a relationship with themselves in many cases, because yeah. most of them believe that they themselves are a part of God, yeah. or that God is some kind of etheric, etheric uh, uh, control of law based control of the universe Energy that has, or something, yeah, yeah, that has no real personality or nature mm -hmm. and it's not an entity. Mm -hmm. And and under, and that is also completely false. And so, it's not what you were talking about. And it's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, so I can mention the word God, but many people will judge what that means through their own concept. I can mention the word reincarnation, and many people will judge that what they mean, what it means through their own belief systems and concept. I can talk about the law of attraction, the law of cause and effect, and and people generally don't listen or hear what's being said because they've already made up their own mind that they already know about that particular thing and that it's what they previously learned. And Janie is doing Jane is doing this. So and for some reason I keep wanting to call her oh, Janie, that, and maybe that's what that's we should be talking about. That's what she said. So let's <laughs> perhaps you know and you can feel her and that's what she likes yeah, to call her. So so yeah. let's call her Janie for the moment. Yeah. Sorry Janie if I've got it wrong. <laughs> and uh, and let's uh, but but that's what she she wishes to do. She she is actually interpreting most of what I say through her already held, firmly held, actually, mm -hmm. and quite arrogantly held 
belief systems. And, and that and is going to be a huge problem if she's ever going to accept God's truth. And that's so, and you're saying that's actually interfering with her comprehension of what you're trying to Completely. convey when you speak. Because you're quite clear when you speak I am, about but, the meanings of things. I am, but, uh, and people sometimes say I talk too much about it, but, um, but this, the reason why I do is because I can feel many times that people are already listening through their own strongly held belief systems and very injured emotional condition. And that sort of creates a filter as to what they actually receive and what they comprehend. Completely. Yeah. Completely. So you're actually saying that that process is an arrogant process, that that holding on to or ha- yes. receive. So the presumption that your own be- your own word that you understand in your own mind is the actual same meaning in the person who's talking to you about that particular word is already a presumption and, a, and, and an arrogant one. Mm-hmm. It would be better to ask them what they mean by that or yeah. what, you know, what, what they actually mean. Now, J- this is why J- the tone of Janie's email is all about con- condemning me for my massive misinformation yeah, yeah. rather than finding out what I actually mean about the law of cause and effect and the law of compensation and what mm-hmm. I mean by karma and all those kind of things. So, in fact, her email, even though, because she says, she sort of says at the end, doesn't she, I'd like your response about this. But, she, but she's, she's demanding not, my response as well. Yes. And she's <laughs> not, even though there, I think there are, she doesn't see my response as a gift. There's one question mark in there, but I didn't even intone it when I read it because it's not written as no, a question. She's making personal statements yeah. about her own belief systems yeah. and phrasing it as a question that she wants a response to, but it's not even a question that's sincere. Mm-hmm. Basically, what she wants to hear from me is that I've made some kind of mistake in her eyes, and I should admit that I've made a mistake and stopped teaching what she believes is misinformation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Honestly, I'm sorry, but I, I haven't done that. <laughs> but so I can't, I can't then, you know, take back anything I've said. Yeah. And and I believe very strongly, and I know very strongly that she completely misunderstands all of our teachings at this point. Yeah. And uh, and is very selective in what she hears based upon her own strongly held belief systems that she's had for 50 years. Now, yeah. to me, 50 years is not very long. And I know people who, who've lived, you know, tens of thousands of years who have held a strongly held a belief system. And even then, it often it's false. Yeah. And, and so do you think for the time period that you hold a belief system really matters to me at all? Of course it doesn't. You can hold, have a belief system for a thousand years. As far as I'm concerned, if it's wrong, it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and also you can study something for that amount of time. But if it's based on a false premise, then it's wrong. And you are actually adding. Um, wait to a false premise the whole time. You're actually not studying. Correct. I know people openly. in the spirit world who have studied teachings of reincarnation for that period of time, mm-hmm. and they're wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, and anybody in a higher condition of love than they are mm-hmm. can easily see how they're wrong, mm-hmm. and they can't see it because they have strongly held emotional and belief systems that they cannot give up because of their own arrogance mm-hmm. and their unwillingness to be humble to their emotional condition and their real state. And so this is a problem. It's a big problem if a person is going to accept truth. Yeah, because I'd like to just go back to that briefly. You were speaking about how, you know, everyone hears, and it's I see it everywhere on the earth, everyone hears information um, and it's coloured by their previous ideas and experience and their their emotionally (coughs) held belief systems. So... Unfortunately, oftentimes their emotionally held belief systems prevent them from understanding any other truth. Yeah. They, they, they are, their emotionally held belief systems cause them to be open to error mm-hmm. and also cause them to want to hold on to it. Yeah. And, uh, and anybody who believes in reincarnation is holding on to error and anybody who wants to believe in it has deeply held emotional convictions that are emotional injuries from their own childhood that cause them to hold on to such error. Mm. Yes, and I guess I'm drawing because um, you've said a lot in that little in those few minutes. But what I'm taking from that is you're saying people have belief systems that are based on emotions within themselves, and until they're willing to be humble to those emotions, then yeah. they're going to hold on to those belief systems, and that's and actually nothing you can do. A- Sorry, nothing you can do will change it. And you're saying that's an arrogant position. It is. Yeah. Because basically, gotcha. it's a lack of humility. Yep. Yeah you're not releasing emotion. Remember, my definition of emotion is to be willing to feel all 
of your emotion, uh, of humility, humility, sorry, is to be willing to feel all of your emotion, whether that emotion is pleasant or unpleasant to experience. Yeah. A person who believes in reincarnation is not willing to do that. Mm -hmm. If they did do that, it's highly unlikely they'd believe in reincarnation. Mm -hmm. so. and, and also, I know you've often said when you're in that state, you're also highly unlikely to become really fixated on your belief system of course. if through your experience you find you're only interested in receiving the truth from God. Yeah. You're not interested in your own 50 years or 100 years or 1,000 years of investigation. Yeah. You're only interested in receiving the truth from God. All of the truths that I present to people are because I've received them from God and also experienced them as an experience, so therefore know them to be true. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, that can't be said to all the people who believe in reincarnation. They believe they've experienced it, but there's a huge number of explanations as to why they believe such mm. things. And the reality is when you pin a person down, yeah. particularly a person who's in the spirit world who believes in reincarnation, and you pin them down, mm -hmm they realise that they've never reincarnated and they've only ever overcloaked people on earth yeah. and, uh, and, and therefore they know that their own teachings are false. Are false, yeah. If they were humble enough yeah. to accept that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to get into the nitty-gritty details of all how, how reincarnation beliefs are perpetuated on earth, aren't we, when we do yes. our FAQ series? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, the next point about uh, humility and love for Janie and her email was about assuming that she understands everything that we're teaching based on having seen, obviously, few, an incomplete amount of our videos. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, making a presumption like that when there's literally like 1,800 hours almost, I think it is now, of videos that are available to watch and listen yeah. to. And making presumption after watching a few hours of that is is already fraught with some dangers, surely. <laughs> and um, my suggestion to Janie would be, no, you know, the fact that you're, you still believe in reincarnation is proof that you haven't watched the very basics of our videos. Yeah. Because yeah. if you did, you would never be able to believe in such a teaching. Or imply that we do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, the next point was assuming that she understands God's laws when most earth-based philosophies Ignore almost all of God's laws. Yes, like she thinks she's talked about the law of cause, cause and, effect, and effect, which yeah. she believes she's studied for 50 years and she knows everything about, and I cannot agree. She knows very little about it. And, uh, and my suggestion is that she'd be better off trying to find more about it from God mm -hmm. um, than trying to discover more from any earth based intellectual philosophy because there's no te comprehensive teaching on the law of cause and effect on earth at all, anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like so, she needs to find out from God about the law, rather than from her own investigation through listening to other people, te what other people tell her, and so forth. Yeah. And in particular, what spirits tell her, because spirits tell her many things that she now believes, mm -hmm. and this is why she's involved in yoga and the head of the Yoga Institute, and why mm -hmm. she believes in reincarnation, and why she has many what new age philosophies as, that are part of her very existence. And that was another point that we wanted to raise, which was about being engaged in these so-called healing modalities such as yoga, when not actually being developed in love oneself is actually quite an unloving state, isn't it? Correct. I've met many people who engage in yoga who are very, very unloving people, mm -hmm. who believe themselves to be very developed people. Mm -hmm. And uh, from God's perspective, they are in the hells of the spirit world. When they arrive in the spirit world, that's where they will exist. And, uh, and they, will, they believe themselves, arrogantly believe themselves to be in a much better condition. And often those same people are quite overcloaked by people. They use yoga as a form of avoiding emotion mm -hmm. rather than connecting to emotion. They want a way to manage their life and... Yeah. and and uh, this is what the spirits who engage the yoga movement have uh, have helped people do and manage their life. And I'm not saying there aren't particular advantages of yoga. There are some advantages, mm -hmm. but it depends how you approach it. Most people who approach it approach it in the manner that they've been taught to approach it, which are driven, and the teachings are driven by some spirits who have no desire to help a person connect emotionally, but rather have a desire to have a person can't be calm and, and present in their body, which is not the same thing as addressing all of your emotional injuries. Yeah. So, so, it, so the net result is that many people who, who practice yoga skip completely over 
all of their emotional injuries or the majority of them. Mm -hmm. And this prevents them from ever, ever becoming at one with God and also ever getting out of the hills of the, of the spirit world, actually. For many of them, when they arrive, that's where they arrive, unfortunately. So you're really saying that many people use yoga to build a facade of calm and spirituality yes. when actually it, they're, they're using yoga to divert them, their it's not themselves they're using, and others from the There's many the purposes. True Yep. They're not only doing it for the diversion, mm -hmm. they're also doing it because it helps them avoid the development in love. They already believe themselves to be the pinnacle of love, them, you know, mm -hmm. as, as do many arrogant people. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, they do not accept God's viewpoint of what is a sin and yeah. what is not, yeah. and therefore can never receive God's love. And, and this is why, you know, so it's, 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 it's very dangerous if you, can, if you use yoga like that. Yeah. It's dangerous for your long-term future to use yoga like that. So so oh, here I am saying some things about yoga and she's telling me that she's the leader, <laughs> the director of the Institute <laughs> yeah. of the, in Australasia. And, well, and, perhaps, uh... and that's why my feelings are, well, you tell me that. And that does not increase my desire to listen to you for many reasons, mm -hmm. some of which are emotional, which we'll talk about in a minute, and love-based, and some of which are just basically based on the fact that I know that the spirit, I'm, I've met the spirits behind yoga, mm -hmm. and I've met, you know, I've, I've met most of the spirits who teach it on earth. So, so I know their condition, and, and you know, unfortunately, th those particular people are misleading people on mm -hmm. earth by helping them use a technique, a physical technique, to, to which which I've also incorporated spiritual philosophies into, yeah. to to avoid the process of getting closer to God. Yeah, actually. Yeah. And so it's one of these techniques that can actually help you greatly avoid <laughs> becoming at one with God. Yeah. Which therefore makes it dangerous to you. Yeah. If you ever want to become at one with God and enjoy that state, mm -hmm. obviously yoga is not going to be the means by which you accomplish that. No. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, if we continue down to what, what I've written yes, there, maybe, yes, and just yep. go through the points, and then, and then we can get to the philosophical discussion. Yes, yes. Yep. So, um, so what section are we in now? We're still on the issues about love and humility. Yes. Yep. Okay. So yep. let's so focus on the issues of love and humility. We are. Yep. Yes. Uh, so, um, assuming that she came to the teaching of divine truth through her own effort rather than through the effort of spirits who were helping, attempting to help her to actually get some truth. and Yeah, she has spirits around her who are in a better condition than her yoga spirit instructors who, uh, who know what I'm talking to be true. And those particular spirits have attempted to influence her to get in contact with divine truth. Unfortunately, the darker spirits, the ones who are involved in yoga, and when I say darker, they're not dark, like, hellish dark but they are darker than the ones who are brighter who are trying to help her towards the divine truth and these particular darker spirits have an, an, an investment in her retaining her current belief systems and position and she has no idea of the battle if you like because it is almost like a battle of her soul going on between these two groups of spirits yeah. and the the yoga group of spirits the ones who are in the darker condition they want her to retain her belief systems. And so when she listens to any material that I present, she automatically assumes that her current understanding of such material is the truth. And she automatically assumes that that's what I think too. Because because she's so, um, she has such a codependent relationship with the, that group of spirits. Yes. She's very open to them sort of. Well, they provide her very livelihood. Yes. They, her whole life, you know, even the money she's earned and so forth is all based around what they provide her. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very hard for her to give them up. Yeah. Because, it, because if she gives them up, she won't even know what to do with her life after that. Mm. And, and all of her life has been invested in the New Age and Yoga movement, if you like. And so, you know, there's a, there's a large investment in her emotionally towards retaining that particular investment um, and towards keeping those belief systems in play. And the spirits with her want her to keep those belief systems in play. But getting back to the love-based issue, the love-based issue is she is not listening to any truth because she already has, unknown to herself, predispositions, emotional, economic and otherwise, which cause her to want to refute the truth whenever she hears it 
because if she does accept the truth, there will be whole chain, wholesale changes in her life that will need to be made that she and the darker spirits with her do not wish her to make. Mm -hmm. And because there's an emotional rapport between her and those spirits, yes. she's more likely to listen to their yes. either misinterpretation or diversion from truth than from these other spirits. And saying. as a result of that, it's very highly likely she will become very angry at this particular feedback session. Yep. And the spirits with her will also become very angry because I can already feel their anger, yeah. although they're worried as well because they're worried that what I might be saying might also be true. true. And they, you know, at this stage where those spirits with her go will depend very much upon their openness to investigate new things and let go of some of their addictions with having control over a person on earth mm -hmm. and having control over a movement on earth. And, and they, they are pretty heavily addicted to that. So the chances of those, those spirits letting that go easily are fairly low. But if they do, then, then I, would, I would assume that another group of spirits will probably just take Janie over and in, in, in the same vein as what she currently is doing, unless she has a more, a much stronger, sincere desire to learn about God and God's love and receive some of God's love, um, that's where she'll go. Mm -hmm. And she will also then get frustrated or more likely condescending with us and therefore not listen anymore. Yeah. Mm. So really you're saying there's two issues about love and one of them is that there's a point of arrogance in believing that you've discovered this divine truth channel and you understand it all. Uh, without help. Without help mm. and and that you actually understand it when in fact you, you don't. You don't. No, yeah. there's yeah. two points of love there. One yeah. is that you're not understanding that you're being led by some higher spirits who are trying to help you come to terms with some of your false belief systems and she is very like anti that very mm -hmm. she's very opposed to that and then the second thing is that not only have they tried to lead her here but once they've led her here she then arrogantly believes that some of the things i'm talking about are the same of what she already believes anyway yes <laughs> yeah which is not true either yeah 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 <laughs> and that's a point of love too a person yeah. who really loves investigates truth um, and is and is open emotionally to truth yeah and she's not yeah mm. okay um the other thing which you've touched on, which is implying that since Janie herself has all of these qualifications, yes. and since she disagrees with what you're saying, yes. then you need to recognise your massive error and change what you are teaching. Yes. Of course, that's very illogical. Like, there's also other lo some lo other logical explanations of what's possible. One could be that she's in a massive error and <laughs> needs to change <laughs> what she's teaching, yeah. right? <laughs> so, so this is this is her again presumption. Uh, like, and and interestingly, as a presumption that demonstrates her own lack of love. Mm -hmm. Also, the fact that she is telling us right up front all of her qualifications in order to gain a, 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 an audience with us is an issue in itself mm. because because if you're like we're going to listen to people whatever who whatever condition they are in and also whatever background they're in if they have no education from a worldly standpoint at all i'm just as willing to listen to them as listen to a professor mm. in fact quite frequently i'm probably more interested in listening to the person with no education than the professor because the professor is often full of philosophical arguments and belief systems and emotions that are too hard to even address <laughs> in in the conversation well when a person uh, comes from a position of already thinking they know most things of course their heart's not really open to learning anymore, definitely not it? there's yeah. no humility yeah. and that and and janie has very little humility mm -hmm. And she believes she does, which is which is another unfortunate circumstance. But she has very little. Mm -hmm. Now, the, that is also an issue of love. It's an issue of love of self. It's actually in your best interest to have more humility, in yeah. your personal interest. But it's also a love of others. Like, if you're humble, you and particularly it relates to your love of God. If you're humble, you're open to God's truth. Mm -hmm. You're not closed to it. And she is closed to God's truth and not open to it at all. And, uh, and that demonstrates that there is an arrogance in her where she feels that she can determine through her own intellectual capacity, because it's certainly not through her emotional capacity, she can determine, she feels, what is truth and what is not mm -hmm. based on the use of her logic. Mm -hmm. but, but she is already very illogical mm -hmm. in many ways because she is driven by a whole heap of emotions which she is suppressing. Mm -hmm. And this lack of logic is driving her decision-making process mm -hmm. and also driving her unloving behaviour. She thinks it's logical to state up front 
that, you know, she's the director of the Yoga Institute in Australasia and so forth, and yep. she's been doing this for 50 years and so forth. She's, she feels it's logical to do that. I feel it's one of the most illogical things. You're not getting to the point, and that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> and, having, and it's also manipulative. It's an attempt to manipulate my um, response right, by mm -hmm. telling me that I should listen to her more than I should listen to the average person. Yeah. And I don't see any reason why I should listen to her any more than I would listen to any person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's probably the final point that we wanted to mention around the issues of love and humility was that Jenny is basically demanding more time and a response from us. Yes. Um, and not recognising already the gift that's there on Definitely YouTube not. and saying, look, I, I would like your answer. Yeah, um, it's, it's a demand. I would like your answer. Yeah. Like, and, like, do I want to give it? There's not even a question of that. No. Yeah. And that is the, her treatment of men, in mm -hmm. fact. Mm -hmm. The way she sees men is that men should do exactly what she wants and if mm -hmm. they don't, they're bastards. Mm -hmm. And that's how she feels about it inside. Mm -hmm. and, and she, as a result, often has men around her doing exactly what she wants and she's quite happy with her life, but she doesn't realise that she's destroying her soul. Mm -hmm. And this is what I would like to get at is that she's doing many things, demonstrated already in her email, mm -hmm. that are actually destroying her own soul condition while at the same time believing that that's not happening at all. Yeah. In other words, she is in a condition where she is sinning mm -hmm. and not yet having an awakening to any sin that she is committing because she believes herself to be righteous or right. And that is a huge problem in her relationship with God. And, and her relationship with others, no doubt. Uh, yes, but unfortunately on earth, people will pander to that emotional addiction. So mm -hmm. if you want to believe that you're superior, there's many people who feel themselves to be inferior and those particular people will pander to you. So you enter in, you finish up in a, a place of responsibility where people look up to you and so forth yeah. because those particular people feel lesser than you mm -hmm. and they feel that you're better qualified or better, better pl placed to serve that position when the actual reality is that those particular people who are feeding your arrogance and your desire for power are actually f doing so because of their own unhealed emotional condition and they're just helping you feed your unhealed emotional condition, which is exactly what's happened to Janie in her life. Yeah. So, so she unfortunately thinks everything's fine when actually everything is in a very, very serious state for her emotionally and from God's perspective in a sin-based perspective. It's a very serious state she's in. Yeah, and I think that kind of relationship, even if there's no conflict in it, doesn't mean it's not problematic. There's a big problem, isn't there, with um, people in codependence like that where one person yes. is exerting power and control over yes. one or many other people. And the fact that she wants to state her qualifications is already an indication that she believes, by having these qualifications, that such qualifications make her more important to listen to. Or and more I, qualified to correct you in some course, way. Of course, both. Yeah. Both. And I cannot believe with both assumptions. Yeah. I cannot agree with both assumptions yeah. because both assumptions are driven by a lack of love mm -hmm. inside of her. Mm -hmm. And I know that my condition of love was already in a better condition than her own. Yeah. And therefore, have a, I'm far better off seeing things from my own perspective than listening to hers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that to people. Yeah. I don't presume that just because I have certain qualifications or even just because I'm Jesus, that it means that everyone should listen to me and that it means everyone should take my word at everything. And I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. She does. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore demonstrates her own arrogance. Yeah. And yeah. therefore demonstrates her own unloving condition to God. Yeah. And therefore demonstrates also why God cannot give her love mm -hmm. because she believes herself to be more better, she believes herself to be superior than other people because of her background, experience and education. Yeah. And that probably leads us to our next set of comments, which is yes. about um, the fact that a person who lacks humility can't e receive <coughs> truth, even when they're led to it and they're standing right in front of it. Yes. They, they are going to be influenced, and we've touched on this, um, by their own unhealed emotional condition and their arrogance and their their arguments even just as Janie's is are going to be based upon their misunderstandings of what's being presented sure. rather yeah. than on what we're actually teaching yes yeah so the main point again is you bury the main <laughs> point there what was the main point we're going to raise next <laughs> <laughs> uh, that a person who lacks humility cannot receive truth even when they're led to it yes and um 
there's a lot of points that we've written underneath that. So One we're now of them going I just to talk mentioned. about that subject. Yeah, so yeah. Let's, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'll punctuate a little better. Yeah. <laughs> we want the high po main points of what we're saying to stand out. That's yeah, all. Sure. And I feel that it's important that, that Janie herself, and she's listening to this, see in the previous section we were discussing her lack of humility and lo unloving condition being demonstrated in her own email, even though she has a facade of friendliness and niceness and even at, at times mm. uh, some kind of approval of me. Um, mm -hmm. She is actually demonstrating her quite poor emotional uh, love-based condition. So that was the point of the previous section. And the point of this section is more about the issue of receiving truth mm -hmm. and how that's affected by the person's belief systems, emotional condition in particular. Yeah, mm. yeah. So the truth is that most people, when they're led to divine truth, actually argue with it. Yeah. yeah. And pretty much everyone I've ever met <laughs> <laughs> argues with it. Or, or believes themselves to know it when they don't know anything about it at all. And, it's, and they only believe themselves to know it because it uses similar wording to what they already believe. And therefore, they feel that they can dismiss what's being said to them uh, because they, they assume, they make the presumption that, that if I use the word God, that it means their definition of God. And if mm -hmm. I use the word reincarnation, it's their definition of reincarnation. Mm -hmm. And if I use the term law, it's their definition of law and so forth. And that's not the case at all. And that's something, that's the problem with communication on earth is that unless you can feel something emotionally, you will not know what the person really means. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I've observed that many times or when a person may have had like a small experience of truth emotionally, mm. um, that then they hear an explanation of you sp speaking about that. And then they assume that because that's in alignment, that, that everything, everything else, else that they believe is the same as what you believe. And that's very much not the case. No, not at all. Um, you know, I've had to learn personally that it's only God's opinion that matters. My opinion doesn't matter. Like what I believe to be true, like I, I often come up with concepts of what I think the truth may be, but then I go through a process of investigation with God to find out whether it is true or not. Yeah. And that process of investigation I have described in previous discussions, in particular with one discussion that we had about a pageant message that I gave on the, uh, that John gave on the subject, yeah. and and you know this is what I do. I don't I don't hold on to my personal opinions on any subject or matter unless they've been established to be true, mm -hmm. and somebody else has to establish them to be true, and the important person to establish it is God, not me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. God, when I know from God that I'm that yes, this is true, then that's. Then, then I know that I need to hold firmly to that position. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I hold firmly to it not because I'm like arrogant or opinionated. I hold firmly to it because I now know through my relationship with God that that is the truth. Mm -hmm. and, there's, and quite often it harms me personally um, to express that particular truth to others. Other people attack me frequently as a result of it. But So there's not much personal <laughs> reward at different times. There is a personal reward obviously with God. But there's not much other personal reward from people mm -hmm. holding on to these viewpoints of truth. Mm -hmm. But but obviously there's great personal reward doing it if you're in harmony with God. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, when people lack humility and they're led to truth, mm -hmm. they're often arguing. Mm -hmm. Which and which she's actually doing. Yeah. So she's presenting her argument, which I've heard a thousand times before, by the way. So, and literally a thousand times before. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I've heard all of these arguments that people have about, you know, that they want to present to me about how I don't believe certain things or they do believe certain things and how I don't understand the truth when I actually do. Yeah. You know, and how they assume that their version of the truth is the truth when I know it's not. And, and there's little like that I can do about it except say to them, well, I'm sorry, but I can't agree with you. Mm. Um, she wants to hold on to a position, but it's interesting how, like I said, it's not a question, which which indicates a lack of sincerity to even know an answer. Yeah, she already believes she knows the answer. And for me, I found it. I find I still don't know what she's Jane, actually asking. Janie <laughs> believes that she'd like you to correct because it's not well. Uh, Articulated. Articulated. Mm, and she says that she's watched a number of your videos on this subject, but you haven't spoken about that subject. Well, I've spoken about the, the law of cause and effect. There is a, two, there of is a course, video yes. on that subject. Yeah, yeah. But I haven't spoken, I haven't given any presentation specifically on the law of on karma. On karma. Because yeah. I don't believe that as it's taught on earth, is yes. actually warrants my 
Yeah. I know it's false and, I, and it doesn't warrant my consideration. I only use the word in relation to trying to obtain a person's point of contact mm -hmm. so that if they do have some kind of background in that New Age or, or Buddhist or Hindu philosophies, that, uh, should we call them Eastern philosophies, mm -hmm. um, that they are able to work out the differences between divine truth and that philosophy. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Okay, so these arguments uh, we've mentioned are based on misunderstandings, mm -hmm. not on what we teach, mm -hmm. and are based on unhealed emotions, including the emotion of arrogance, which we've mentioned to Janie that she does have. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, and then we mentioned earlier briefly that belief systems um, are driven by unhealed emotions, and to let them go, people need to let go of their attachment to... The belief system, which is the unhealed emotion mm -hmm. itself. And to let go of an unhealed emotion, you need to experience the emotion hum humbly. Mm -hmm. And you also generally need to receive some of God's love in that process. Otherwise, you can't receive the truth that, to replace the uh, false belief. And unfortunately, reincarnation as it's taught on earth is a completely false belief. Mm. Karma as it's taught on earth is a completely false belief. Mm -hmm. And, and there's, you know, there are aspects of it that relate to some divine truth at different points, but unfortunately it's a very slim um, kind of correlation, or, correlation or, or relationship and, and almost unrecognisable from the average person who believes, you know, in God's truth. Mm -hmm. The two beliefs, are un, you know, can't, can't be ratified, can't be joined together in any way. So, so the reality is that these kind of belief systems, and I say this about all humankind developed philosophy, that, that in the end, you're going to have to give it up if you want to become one with God. Yeah. 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 Okay. And in order to do that, you're going to have to let go of some emotions. In order to do that, you're going to have to go through some very, very traumatic for many people, emotional uh, upheavals. Mm -hmm. Yes. But that's the only way that a person is going to be able to understand God's truth on yes. any matter. Yes. Yep. Yep. There are in built in, you know, because of the way that humans have imposed emotion on the next generation of humans and so forth, there are huge amounts of emotions that determine religious philosophies on this planet, mm -hmm. along with many other philosophies, scientific mm -hmm. and otherwise. None of, none of the things that are true, are actually true, demonstrably true, are related to philosophy. Mm. They're all related to actual occurrence and uh, re reincarnation as it's taught on the planet doesn't actually occur. Yeah. <laughs> it's just an idea or a concept developed for, for many reasons, which mm -hmm. we'll talk about. But, but some of those reasons include things like, you know, being afraid to die yeah. <laughs> and, and also noticing that the personality of the next generation of children happen to be very similar to the, one of the past personalities of a past generation of, yeah. of, of, of adults and, and, understand, and trying to somehow ratify the link between those two occurrences. And there's many other reasons why people believe in reincarnation. There are many scientific and actual events that can actually be proven to occur, um, which are an alternative explanation to reincarnation. But the majority of people who believe in reincarnation do not want to receive them because they emotionally cannot cope with the alternatives. Yeah. 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 And that's why they reject them. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So we've covered the signs of a lack of love and humility in yes. Danny's email. And and I think we need to say about that is is that it can it's interesting that a person who thinks themselves or believes themselves to be in such good condition and such well knowledge per, you know a knowledgeable person can actually be from god's perspective in such a poor condition from a love-based perspective yeah and demonstrate that poor condition in a facade based email quite openly and clearly it's demonstrated but most people would believe the facade rather than seeing it as god sees it mm. And this is where I feel any listener who's listening to this who's questioning, oh, why is OJ saying these things? The, if, if you're confused about why I'm saying that her email is unloving, mm -hmm. then I suggest to you that you are very confused about God's definition of love and therefore need to receive more of God's love <laughs> in order to uh, understand why it is that such emails are quite unloving. Yeah. Now, normally we would not respond to this kind of an email because it is so unloving yeah. and demanding. 
Yeah. And it also generally is a waste of our time because the person is emotionally blocked to receiving an answer on the subject. Mm -hmm. They already believe themselves to know the answer, so there's little we can do to help them. Now, I'm hoping through this transaction that even if Janie herself isn't helped by our response and doesn't develop a bit more humility than she currently has, that the other people who are listening can at least see that, that if they believe that her email is quite considerate and kind, that there is actually quite some strong injuries with love inside of those particular people that mm -hmm. they need to address from God's perspective if they're ever going to understand God's view of love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, and then the other major point that you've made is about um, how a person is led to divine truth and also if a person is not humble, then they will... <coughs> excuse me... <coughs> not receive the truth even when they're led to it. Yes. Yep. Humility, humility which, which is very much emotional, um, allows a person to receive truth. It allows a person to, to absorb new information without resistance. Mm -hmm. Janie has a huge amount of resistance. What she believes on is, is a massive error on my part mm -hmm. actually is a massive error on her own. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how skewed her opinion is here mm -hmm. with regard to truth and love. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, yep. Okay. So it's interesting, isn't it, that a lot of people are, believe that they're very loving, are led to divine truth. They don't acknowledge that they're led by... Actually, they're led by some very loving spirits yeah. to, to help them come to accept some truths that they currently do not believe. And mm -hmm. Jane is in this place where she, she believes a lot of New Age philosophy that have no bearing on the actual truth of the universe. Yeah. They're only philosophies of humankind. Mm -hmm. She believes in them sincerely because she gets a lot of spirits backing up these belief systems. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a group of spirits that are trying to help her break through this particular problem but it's going to be how successful they are is going to depend very much upon whether she is much more humble and more willing to experience her emotions than she currently is. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm suggesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we move now on to some of the more um, truthful points yeah. about what we are, are actually teaching yeah. and what the truth and what, is. You know, because yeah. it, is, it does open discussion towards the law of cause and effect, the law mm -hmm. of... Uh, compensation and the karma itself as it's taught on earth and it's as it's basically felt to be as as to how those particular things do do relate if, if at all yeah mm. yeah okay <coughs> um the fourth topic we wanted to talk about was that divine truth teachings have no relationship to the teachings of any relate religious faith or philosophy mm. including new age philosophies yes yeah now, you know, just generally, mm -hmm. divine truth teachings are God's truth, not humankind's philosophies. Mm -hmm. So we need to say that most humankind philosophy, and by the way, most human philosophy came from the spirit world in the first six spheres of the spirit world as well. So I'm also including most philosophy that you'll ever hear in your first six year, spheres of development once you've reached the spirit world. And most, almost all philosophies on earth have no bearing at all to God's truth. Mm -hmm. Or if they have bearing, they have a very uh, loose and, and they're, they're sort of like tiny morsels, if you like, of truth incorporated into huge amounts of errors and falsehood mm -hmm. on so, the planet. So all of the teachings that have originated on earth have basically come from that first to six spheres. Yeah, and most from the first, yeah. because that, the first sphere is the sphere where most people on earth are in the development of. And so the first sphere is the sphere that you hear most of these teachings from. And this includes even things like the, you know, things like the, um, uh, what do they call it? The, the book that we're often asked about that they say I channeled. Uh, uh, Course in Miracles. Course in Miracles. That, that came, the spirit was in the first sphere when he channeled yeah. that. Uh, yeah. He wasn't in a place of development at all. Mm -hmm. And he was in quite a confused space actually when he first channeled that to people on earth, he could connect to the people on earth, so he channeled the material. The, much of the Bible is channeled in yeah. the same way by yeah. spirits in the first or second sphere of the spirit world. Yeah. Many of the teachings that are contained within the Bible are channeled from the first or second sphere of the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And many teachings from the Muslim faith 
the Muslim faith, in fact, completely was channeled mm -hmm. from uh, first, spirit, spirit. Yeah, first spirit. The the um, the uh, Buddhist faith, the Hindu faith, many faiths on the planet are all channeled material, mm -hmm. and it, that includes all, almost all Christian faith on mm -hmm. the planet is all, a lot of channeled material too, mm -hmm. and it's also inclusive of all uh, or most of the obscure more obscure religions such as uh, like the mormon religion and so forth yeah. much of that is also all channeled material mm -hmm. and these channelings come from what you could call it mediumship or channelings mm -hmm. come from spirit locations where the spirits themselves have not learned the truth mm -hmm. they believe themselves to know the truth and they share what they believe with people on earth who then either correctly or incorrectly write it down yeah and then propagate it yeah. Uh, based on their opinions of how believable it is. And often that is even influenced by the spirit themselves. Mm -hmm. So in other words, mm -hmm. the spirit gives them a lot of momentum, a yeah. lot of yeah. reasons to believe why they believe certain, th you know, believe certain things. There are spirits in the spirit world who, when you arrive, they will try to convince you that Christianity is true. Mm -hmm. There are spirits in the spirit world when you arrive that will try to teach you that reincarnation is true. Mm -hmm. That's because they believe it's true. They've never experienced these particular things as truth, yeah. but they believe them to be true, and so they'll try to teach them to you, just like they try to teach it on earth. Yeah, yeah. So the, the big delineating um, factor between all of those faiths that you are speaking about and God's truth is that, would you say, the reception of God's love is... The, the reception of God's truth comes from God to yeah. you, and that comes through the reception of God's love. Without God's love, you can't receive God's truth. Mm -hmm. Without God's love, you can't even understand it, let alone receive it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this is what we find. Most people who haven't received God's love cannot even understand what we're saying to them. Yeah. They hear the words and they think they know, yeah. but they can't put it into practice in their day-to-day -day life because they have not heard, felt God's love. They haven't... Yeah actually had God's love enter them that allows them to understand. And this is a primary point of difference. Yeah. One, all of the other truths or so-called truths, which are all just philosophies, mankind made or spirit made, which are all human philosophies, yeah. all of those human philosophies come from the mind of a group or one individual. Mm -hmm. God's truth comes directly from God to you through the reception of God's love. It's a very, very different process. And God's truth is scientifically accurate because it's the way the universe works. Humankind's philosophies can be inaccurate or accurate depending on how much they are in line with God's truth. Yeah. But they are just concepts of humans in the end. Mm -hmm. Now, some human concepts are actually accurate and some are not. Obviously, the majority are not. <laughs> and that's why there's so much confusion and, and pain and suffering on the planet because the majority are not. And, uh, and we need to understand divine truth is God's truth shared with humans. Yeah. Right? God's truth shared with humans. All the other philosophies on this planet are humans' ideas or concepts of truth, philosophies, human philosophies, hum hum human opinion, really, in the mm -hmm. end, shared with other humans. Yes. There's a huge difference between those two things. There is. And you, it's very easy, isn't it, to tell the difference between a person who has actually received truth from God and a person who is just uh, like Janie, who hasn't yet received God's love or truth. And you can, if you've received God's love or love, you know when you meet a person who has not. Yeah. And I can say to you, Janie, you have not. Yeah. You've not yet received God's love. You think you have, but you have not. Yeah. And, and you know, many people are in that state where they think they have. In fact, it's one of the most damaging states mm -hmm. because you don't make an effort because you already believe that you're in a state that's that you're not. It's loving. And, so you and, don't make an effort yeah. to yeah. receive God's love because you already believe you have. And similarly, then you can see how that a person like that can also hear divine truth and think that they know what is being taught when in fact they haven't engaged their heart, they haven't received God's love, and so they, no. they, they really don't. And they it. often either have confirming things from spirits, mm -hmm. which are trying to confirm with them, you know, this is true, you need to investigate this further. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and yet even after that, many, of, many people who heard divine truth still believe they personally know it even after they've received huge amounts of confirmation. This is a common thing with regard to people calling me Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, most people on this planet, oh, I don't know anyone on the planet who's actually resolved that problem yet. There's a whole heap of people who think they have, mm -hmm. 
but not fully have mm -hmm. they re resolved this problem yet because it requires you dealing with quite a lot of emotions before you recognize who I am. Yeah. Because, because you have to first be able to, you'll have to recognize who God is too yeah. in that process. And most people on the planet are extremely blocked to God. Yeah. So it's very difficult to recognize who God's messenger is if, if you're blocked to the person who sent that messenger. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Okay. Um, a couple of points which you've basically touched on, but just to finish off this section, um, the belief that one has received God's love when a person hasn't is actually one of the most damaging beliefs that a person can have while they're on earth or yes. in the spirit world, but often and on earth. And, yeah. um, it's very um, it's a, it's a damaging huge, on earth, isn't huge it? huge problem. Yeah. And it is a huge problem. Um, we talked about this problem in the Paget Messages, actually. Yeah the delusional state of believing yourself to have received God's love when you have not is, is often a worse state than knowing that you haven't, that you haven't received divine love and having the attempt to try. Mm -hmm. So like, and in fact, most people who believe that they've already received it don't try. And as a result, unfortunately, and there's huge numbers of people like that. Yeah. And many people who listen to the pageant messages are exactly like that. Yeah. They're receiving love from spirits, which I wouldn't classify as love, but rather the feeding of addictive emotions. Yes. And they have not received love from God yet, but they believe they have. And so they don't even try to do it or learn what God's way actually is. Many people in many faiths would have that experience. Yes. Yes. It's a huge yeah. problem. Yeah. And, and it is something that it's, it's hard because only those people who have actually received divine love know when another person hasn't. Yeah. And, and that's the trouble is recognizing who has and who hasn't is very, very difficult yeah. for most people on earth because they're trying to judge it intellectually yeah. because they've not personally gone through the experience. Yeah. So that's a problem. And, and unfortunately, like I said, because they haven't gone through the experience but believe themselves to have had the experience, they then don't make the proper attempt using the proper method mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. think that their own methods are already correct yeah. and therefore they don't try something different yeah mm. very important mm. okay the other very important point we wanted to make was the this belief that one can understand something anything while their own emotional state prevents a soul-based understanding of that thing is a fallacy yeah and without foundation and it's only generally after people pass and sometimes after many, many years that they come to understand that very important truth that, that it's impossible to understand a thing unless you're emotionally. Yes, it's possible to understand on earth, obviously, but, but most people don't. Yes. They, they think when they intellectually know something that it means they understand it. Mm -hmm. And nothing could be further from the truth, actually. <laughs> Most people have no understanding of God's love or love itself yeah. at all. Yeah. You can see that through the day-to-day -day examination of their own life. So it's proof that they don't understand, and yet they believe they do. Wanting to hold on to beliefs about yourself that you want dearly to believe are true, but which are not, mm -hmm. is one of the most, again, damaging things you can do to your own progression. Yep. And this is something that Janie herself is doing. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yep. And the final point was that just because spirits and people use similar words or the same words even that we use, it does not mean that they, they are using them in the same way or that they have the same meaning behind them. That's right. If you can't feel the person emotionally what they mean, then you're limited to understanding the words. And this is how people intellect with the, who are using their intellect communicate. It's a very limited form of communication because you don't know what people really feel mm -hmm. or really think. Yeah. You only know what they're expressing to you through their words. Yeah. Whereas, whereas once you're sensitive emotionally, you can feel what they're trying to say, even if they don't use the right words. Yeah. Yeah. You can feel their intention. You can feel their desire. You can feel their, the love they have. You can feel the hatred and other dark emotions that they have even if they are not aware of them. Yeah. And, and also on the other side, if, if, if I go to a lecture about the law of attraction and I'm quite emotionally open and I can really feel the presenter and then I go to another presentation by a different present presenter about the law of attraction, even though they might use the same terminology, 
I can feel, hang on, this person means something entirely different Correct. to what that person was talking about. Correct. Yeah. And now you might be using exactly the same words mm -hmm. and saying almost the same thing. Yeah. And you can feel that they have no idea what they're talking about or that what they're talking about is completely different to what the other person was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is the beauty of communicating emotionally. It, it is far more accurate mm -hmm. than intellectual communication. Mm -hmm. And it does not need to use words. It does use words eventually, but it does not need to use words in order to understand. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Mm. Okay, let's go on and talk about the law of cause and effect and the law of compensation. Well, maybe we just need to have a break so yeah. I can go yeah. to the toilet yeah. and then we can go ahead with that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs>